Hey everyone, welcome back to Red Banner Racing. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to go ahead and repair your slipper clutch assembly. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of my car and it's pretty quick repair. We're gonna take it out, clean it, show you guys the parts and how to clean out the pads and go from there. So let's jump right into it. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, pop the body off. Now I am gonna have to take off the center chassis brace because that is definitely in the way. And unfortunately, having the center chassis brace is a great thing because it doesn't let the body flex as much, so you don't chew up too many spur gears. The only bad flaw is anytime you have to do any kind of repair, you have to you have to remo remove it. All right. Pop it up. I like to pop it up carefully like that because then I can leave everything in it. So I don't have to worry about losing any of the screws. I'm gonna put this aside. Now, in case you guys are wondering, we did switch from the Ryobi to the Milwaukee. And the reason I did this is because I can keep this on a low torque setting. So I don't strip any of the screws out. The only problem with the Ryobi is you can easily strip the screws out if you're not careful. So if you guys aren't used to using tools, I would highly recommend maybe switching to something with a clutch in it because that way you won't have to worry about stripping anything out. Just keep it on a really low setting. That way you can just drive man like for instance, right here. You know, I can't over tighten it. Now, if the plastic is weak, you're still gonna strip it out. So I would still be careful, but this is a better choice. It's a little heavier than the Ryobi, but a lot of the stuff that I have is already Milwaukee, so I mean, it just helps to use that because all my batteries fit it. All right, so now we got that. I'm going to take this back cover off. All right, pop that off. Okay, I'm going to keep these two aside. All right, now that shows us our slipper clutch there. It's a little bit dirty, but that's okay. If you guys don't have a chassis brace, by the way, you're going to remove these two front screws and these two back ones. Once you have those, I'm going to get this dirt out of here real quick. You're going to flip it over. And you're going to remove these two bottom ones. It's always good to have a pick on hand because of the dirt buildup that gets stuck in there, right there. Uh, with all the tools that we use, uh, our bits have lasted so long. And as you can see, some of our, uh, our screws are the original screws and they are really beat up. But if you have the right tools and you take care of your stuff, it's going to last forever. Here we go. Take those out. And what I like to do, I mean, everyone's different, but I usually keep the parts I take off on the rear on my right and the front on my left. That way I can kind of keep the parts separated so I know exactly where everything goes. So now we've got those out. Wiggle the back. And it should pull right off. Just like that. Obviously, I'm going to clean that up before I put it back in. So I'm going to go ahead and put this aside. Now we got the back end taken apart. And flip it over just so you can see it right there. I'm going to take this carefully, take it out. And your drive shaft, your center drive shaft, you can just leave it in here. It's just going to float in there. If it falls out accidentally, don't worry about it. Just reattach it to your drive hub. See, I'll just pull it out. Like that. This is so beat up, guys, look at that. But these aluminum ones, they last a long time. They're gonna get scraped up pretty bad, but they last a long time. But you can just put it right back in here. Okay, just eyeball it, stuff it in there. That'll be good, I'm gonna put this aside. What we're gonna be working with here is a slipper clutch. Now, I do have a hot racing spur gear on here, and that really helps because this will last a long time. Let me go ahead and get a rag. Gotta get some new rags, guys. All right, so. We're gonna do this here. We're gonna make sure everything's nice and clean up before we start working on it. Yeah, this one got a little bit dirty. All right. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go take that set screw out of that drive hub. See, and that is your 2.0. This one was a little loose, actually. That's okay. We're gonna clean this up, and we'll put a dab of Loctite on that before we put it back in. So I'm gonna put this right here so you guys can see it. Take this drive hub, 
it might be stuck on there. So if it is stuck on there, you just got to work it off. All right, so you may have to carefully, without hurting the threads, I just grab it by, I just kind of, I put it on the threads, but I don't bite the threads. I kind of use it just to pry up. Like that, nope, a little more. Sometimes these can get stuck. It's coming, just like that. So I'm not, I'm not biting the threads. I'm putting it on and I'm kind of using leverage off of this nut right here and popping it up because these will get stuck sometimes. So you have to pry them up a little bit. I, I love this tool. I don't know where I got this tool, but I think it came with one of the cars. This is great for prying. I mean, it really, this doesn't fit in here, but it, it does really good for leverage. Get my other tool here. It's an eight millimeter. I'm gonna grab this. And I'm gonna go ahead and take that locking nut off all the way. Put that right there. I'm gonna take the spring off. Put the spring right there. You got the bearing and the bearing carrier in here. So I'm gonna pop this out right here. Just like that. Go and clean these off so you guys can take a look at these. This one's still the plastic one. I did not get the aluminum. Honestly, if I was you guys, I would stay away from the aluminum. And this bearing. This bearing does have a rough spot. Actually, maybe that was just my finger. It's actually not too bad. We're gonna go ahead and keep this. Not too bad. But yeah, a lot of guys uh, put the aluminum one in. Now, there's nothing wrong with using aluminum, but if the if the, the aluminum gets really hot, it can actually get stuck and seize on the bearing. So that's why I kind of stay away from aluminum parts. Uh, I stay away from a lot of aluminum parts. I don't really don't go aluminum. Anyways, let's go ahead and take the slipper off. I mean, that's for here. Okay, got that off. Here's the pads. Let's go ahead and pull the pads right there. I think we're missing one. There it is. All right, this is the pressure plate assembly. Not looking too bad, a little dirty. And this is the input shaft. Now, if you press on the input shaft, there we go. Right there. You wanna make sure this is straight. I've seen these get bent or these get stuck and you can't get this apart. Uh, this one's obviously in good shape. Uh, leave that pin right there, cause you know, I really doubt you're ever going to break that pin, but crazier things have happened. So I want to put that back in just like that. Get this nice and clean off. Same thing with the pressure plate. Now, if you really want to get this stuff clean, let me grab something right here. I can use a sponge with the rough side, scotch guard, any kind of scotch guard pad. Don't use sandpaper because this is just fine. Let me get one side clean, I'll show you. Just like that. It does a great job. Uh, you don't want to use anything rough. Otherwise you'll end up, uh, you don't hurting it and you don't want to use any sandpaper. There's no need for sandpaper guys. That's it. That's nice and clean. You can take, go around the shaft right there. Get that nice and clean. Get that nice looking good. Same thing with the other pressure plate right here. Just like that. Look how clean that looks. We'll go ahead and do both sides. I'm not gonna do it too much because I don't have a problem with my slipper clutch. But if you have a problem with the slipper clutch slipping or it's not grabbing, go ahead and clean this real quick. Just make sure this is nice and clean. If it's still doing it, check your pads because these pads, they'll get glazed over. If they get glazed over, they're not gonna grab and it's just gonna slip. So what you're gonna do with these pads, you can take a little bit of sandpaper and carefully, carefully just sand the surface. 
a little bit. You don't need to do it a lot. Uh, I wonder if I can actually get it clean with this. Let me see. A little hard to do with this. Yeah, you can do it with that. You just have to do it by, uh, grab it by the side. Yeah, that works. That actually looks much better. But yeah, you can grab this. Get those scuffed up. Scuffing this up really does help. And a lot of times what you could do, if, if you're still having problems, take the pad, because the pad sits right in here like this. Actually, this one's got a lot of stuff in it. Oh, you can see it coming out. Yeah, this one had a lot of stuff in it. So just take a little pick, work each side, get that pad material that's kind of stuck in there, get all that out. That looks better. So the pad, and don't force it. If you force it, you will crack these pads. Put it in there just like that. Now, what you can do sometimes, if the hole's big enough, some of them are different. You can flip these upside down and use the other side. By you by doing that, you can uh, extend the life of the pad, and sometimes it gives it a better surface to, to write on. This one, it doesn't look like it's going to fit in reverse. I had one car that fit both ways. It may have been the Bandit. I'm going to get this cleaned up real quick, and then... We're going to reassemble. Go ahead and pop this bearing out right here. You guys probably can't see it, but I'll show you. There we go. Right there. Get that bearing cleaned up. Ooh, that bearing actually is worn out. Let me see if I have a bearing. I'm, I'm pretty sure I have one. Let me see if I have one real quick before we put this back together. Actually, you know what? 5119A should be that guy right there. All right, guys, it took some searching, but I actually had one. It's a 5116, 5116. I'm gonna fit in there just like that. That bearing was a little worn out, so. I think in the hot racing, it, it's it got a little bit of play in it with the hot racing, but it fits, fits just fine. And we're also gonna go ahead and replace this back one while we're in there. That's 5119. Just be safe, because there is kind of a there's a rough spot right there. And, you know, rough spots and bearings, that's going to cause a lot of noise problems. So let's go ahead and get that replaced. Just be safe. All right, so let's go ahead and put these pads back on. Do that. Put them on there. Make sure they're nice and flat, just like that. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the pressure plate. It's okay if that bearing falls out. It's probably going to fall out a little bit. That's okay. Line that pressure plate up. You see these marks right here? I'm going to line those up with these notches. Just like that. Okay, now that that's in, I usually hold that on so it doesn't move. Go right down in. Kind of hold it right there. Let's go and put this bearing back in. So that'll keep it lined up just like that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these back together. So we're gonna go ahead, get our other pieces here. Just like that. That little carrier that's in there holds that bearing. Just like that. I'm gonna pop our spring on. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our locking nut on. Once you get that secure like that, now you can go ahead and let go. Looks just like that. All right, let's get it tightened down a little more. Let's get our eight mil. There we go. And there you go. It's really not that hard to repair. Uh, just take your time with it. Make sure you check out the diagram if you guys don't have it downloaded. Uh, you can go to Traxxas, go to the support page for your car, and you can actually find all the part diagrams. What I do is I just download them all for every car that we have. 
And then I, you know, screenshot all the features and everything for all the cars. Cause you never know when Trax is going to take that stuff off their site. So it's always good just to have, that way you always have that documentation for your car. I mean, your car should come with it already, uh, with the parts list that you're, you know, that came with your car. So it's always good to keep all that stuff. Just like the e Revo. I mean, some of those older cars, you're not going to see them on the page anymore. So uh, we make sure we download all the information we can about it and then save it. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take this, go all the way down to where it's nice and snug. Okay. And then you're going to, I'm going to back off uh, a full turn. So get nice and tight right there. So right there. So I back off about a full turn. Uh, that's really just going to differ by how you drive. So if you're going to be on the dirt a lot, go ahead and, you can go and crank it down, loosen half a turn to a turn. If you're going to be on the street, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to play with that, play with that a little bit. You know, do about do about a turn, turn and a half, and go drive it. Make sure you're not popping wheelies. Make sure it's slipping a little bit. That way, you know you're not you're not putting too much stress on your axles. The pr the purpose of the slipper clutch it's like a center diff. So you want it to slip because it helps to take some of the torque away from the axles, a lot of that stress, and it, it slowly engages as you speed up. Uh, it kind of works just like a center diff with a uh, different fluid. So if you have heavier fluid, obviously that's like tightening this nut down. Now, if you want to put thinner fluid in your center diff, you're going to loosen this nut up. It's going to do the same thing. So we're always on the dirt with these cars, so we don't have to worry about putting too much strain on our cars. So sometimes I'll just tighten this all the way down. I mean, you tighten it all the way down, you lock this thing up, uh, you're going to be doing some wicked jumps. I mean, we're talking like like revolutions <laughs> in, in midair. You're going to be doing a lot of backflips. It's going to have a lot of power. But you got to really be careful with that because you can easily break your axles and you can break other parts. It really puts a lot of stress. So honestly, go 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 out one turn and then go from there. You know, don't go, don't go too crazy with it. So let's go ahead and put this guy right back on. Make sure you're right on that flat spot right there. Press it in nice on it. It's because of that set screw, there might be a little notch there. If you want to fix that, what you could do is take a little grinder and grind that down a little bit to make it nice and smooth. To me, it doesn't matter because I mean, I'd rather have it nice and tight just in case the set screw comes loose. It ain't going to go anywhere. I want to put a very tiny bit of Loctite on there. I think uh, there's enough in the cap right there. Yeah, right there. Just enough. You don't want to use a lot on this. All right, now that we got that done, let's go ahead and put it back in the car. Let's go ahead and make sure this drive shaft, the center drive shaft is in properly. I carefully just had to put it in and then turn the wheels to make sure it spins so we know it's on. All right, so that's on. We lay that right there. Now let's get our back end. We're going to get that cleaned up. I know you guys can't see this, but I'm just cleaning it up real quick. Yeah, I know this doesn't look the best. But I normally get this really nice and cleaned up when I do my uh, my disc services. I do mine about every every three months. It really just depends on how hard you drive your car. But every three months is is pretty good for me. So all right, now we got that. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and take this, and you're gonna put it. Oh, you guys can see with it, but that's where that one bearing sits. You go in there just like. Just like that. But what we're gonna do is make sure it's wow, look at that. I did it blindly. Here we go. Got that in there. This part always seems to get people, I think, uh, lining this up. And there's a good way to do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna line this up. We're gonna put it right in right there. And then we're gonna roll it just a little bit. Sometimes it doesn't want to go in. This one looks like it's going to fight me a little bit, but that's okay. Here we go. Perfect. Fell right in. So yeah, if you move your car just a little bit, you know, you know, don't go nuts, just go slow and it'll pop right in. So now that that's in, I'm going to flip it upside down like that. And we're going to put these two bottom ones in, put this cap on. Yeah, I really, really like this chassis brace. 
but man, it's, it's kind of a pain. You got to take this apart every single time. You got to remove this. So that's the real only drawback to this. Now I'm going to get my driver and just go over, make sure these ones are snug and make sure these ones are nice and snug because these ones are uh, the ones on the back are the main ones that hold that chassis together. So you might make sure those are snug. Yep, that's it. Everything looks good now. Yeah, everything's ready to rock and roll. Uh, Rustler, man, I love, love, love this car. This is so much fun to drive. You can really put this thing through hell uh, and it really holds up. I really, high, re really highly recommend the HD kit. The HD kit has been a lifesaver. Uh, I'm probably gonna up the oil. I got 50 in the front since I did that last repair and I think I'm gonna put 50 in the back. Uh, I might put, I'm actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna put maybe 50 in the back because I've had to put these collars all the way down when I go jumping ramps because uh, it wants to slap a lot. So now I'm gonna change that out. But anyways, that's how you do the slipper clutch. If you guys have any questions, uh, any comments, just you know, put them down below. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. I wanna try and do a lot of these little videos for you guys because I think they really help those who are looking for more additional information on hands-on repairs. So that's what I'm gonna try and provide you guys. In the next video I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go and show you guys how to take the servo out and reinstall it. Cause I think that's another big one because you know, some guys get, I think some people, you know, new to the hobby, they get a little intimidated by taking the servo out, especially when, you know, you chip a tooth and you want to put new steel gears in it. So that'd be another good video I can do for you guys. Uh, leave a comment down below. If there's anything on this car that you want to know how to remove properly or inspect, let me know. I'll make a video. I have a whole list going of uh, videos that people wanted us to make and I'll go ahead and add that to it. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. See you on the next one.